Welcome to Great Talk and Entertainment. I'm your host, KJ, and this is the podcast where I review movies and TV shows from all your favorite superheroes, including Marvel Comics, DC Comics, and much more. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment official channel. Now let's go, baby! Hello everyone, welcome to the podcast as I do another spoiler review for the new Disney Plus series and Hulu Marvel's Echo series. So this is going to be my first spoiler for episode one. I was going to do episode on episode. I know they released all these episodes all in one day, but for all my fans, all my followers, and the people who just want to Hear the spoiler review for episode by episode. That's what I'm going to do here on Great Talking Entertainment Office channel, only on YouTube. That's what I will be doing. So this would be my episode one spoiler review for season one of Echo, which is now on Disney Plus and Hulu. So y'all been warned. Let's get into it. The show starts off with Maya and her cousin Bonnie. Her cousin Bonnie tells the legendary of the Chaco of the ancient tribe that was trapped in the caves but escaped the power. Now the story continues on with Maya's origin story where her and her mother go to the store and they get in their vehicle and they're heading to the store is, is what I should say. And as, as Maya's mother is driving another vehicle hits her and her mother now the mother did not make it but Maya did but she also lost one of her legs and now she rocks a prosthetic leg Maya and her father moved to New York after this because a lot of people in that neighborhood in Oklahoma is understands what her dad is associated with what he's doing and throughout this whole season we see what type of stuff he's been running for all these years and obviously down the line we learn why and we kind of understand why from the Hawkeye series so this is so basically Maya is is basically going to New York and this all takes place in the year 2007 and obviously, Maya was a child when this happened. So, it, this is not her in 2007 as an adult. Maya and her father, like I said, moved to New York because of the fact that he was at the cave. And we also get this flashback of Rowan slash Hawkeye going on a killing spree, including Maya's dad, who died from him. And then we last see Maya from the Hawkeye show as she's hunting him down for revenge and she finds out from that from from Hawkeye that Kingpin hired him basically to to get him to get her dad so it, it he explained to her in in sign language that you know you know Kingpin set your dad up to get killed like he was just doing a job you know I mean, it comes with that uh, gang t- territory of a mobster. And, you know, we, we they show the flashback of her being upset and because she, she was very close with her dad. We know that from the Hawkeye. And we learn more how close they were in this uh, season one of Echo. And then, and, and it also goes back to the flashback. And then it gives us, in this episode, here's on the show that what she's doing now she travels from New York to Oklahoma and now this is more towards how she left off the Hawkeye series and so remember she shot the kingpin and now she's on the run she's going back from New York to Oklahoma she lays low at her family's old home while visiting her uncle Henry to ask for his dismantle that remains of this this criminal empire so she can take it out and take over it but he of course he refuses as Maya's plans very crazy 
But the next move, the episode ends with the sight of a heavily bad fist in the hospital recovering from Maya's gunshot. And he he pretty much got shot in the eye. And it, it, it was just very interesting to where it was going. And what I liked about this is that she she has a like a cousin who's gonna be pretty much like the sidekick and he's a little goofy kind of like uh ned from uh, spider-man the tom holland version and he he's he's gonna be the comedy to balance out it and and that obviously echo is gonna be the more serious character and what I already liked about this is this is going to be a whole season of just she's a character that doesn't have like like superpowers as far as like mute like not mutant but more like a she's not very she she more is of a ground like she can fight she can't fly she can't um you know shoot laser out of her eyes she's definitely not like the Guardian of the Galaxy, but she's a street level character, you know, like Spider Man and stuff. But I, th- what, where I'm really excited about this whole season is it's just going to be full of action packed. Like, this is like fist to fist, bones breaking, uh, guns a blazing. Like, it, it's going to be a nut. And, and I tell you what, I'm going to say this through a lot of the reviews, but I really like the fact they're using the Native American culture with this character and I really like that they're you know shining a spotlight for this uh, this type of you know culture that just doesn't really been talked about or use a lot that I haven't seen on movies or shows like the Hulu movie uh, Prey which is just a prequel to the movie Predators and then any aliens if you want to really connect so let's start with um the first topic uh episode one obviously gave us a couple flashbacks uh with her maya and her cousin bonnie talking about a legendary uh tribe that happened and obviously this definitely to me connects to season two of marvel's what if with uh the character the character uh kahora and and what she's done so it's very interesting because we haven't seen this and like her her heritage really started in the mcu in phase one realistically if you go by the flashback of the past of where where she's coming from and who she's related to and who's like her great 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 mother great great grandmother grandfather and all that like it's just one of those. So really, it's really setting this MCU and making it expand out. Like, there is other time periods in the current MCU and the in the main uh, multiverse of this. So this would be like the sacred time. Like, this was meant to happen, right? And so, where Maya comes from. It's like it all happened before Captain America, the first Avenger movie, basically. And it, I think this indicates to me, to me personally, what I believe is that a lot of the next Marvel project will probably have this type of formula and format, whether it's TV on the Disney Plus or Hulu, maybe, and or just in a movie, right? I think now instead of trying to make one movie and then say this really starts in phase one, they'll just have these like flashbacks of a past to give you the understanding like, okay, like this particular story that Maya's cousin is telling her about actually took place way before Captain America, the first Avengers. So I can see Marvel's gonna start adding more to phase one but not taking the whole film or making a whole show based off of phase one so it kind of like 
makes people remember about Phase 1 and want to go back and rewatch some of the classic Marvel movies of Phase 1, like Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, and etc., right? So that's just one little way they're trying to keep everybody on their toes and want to look back about that. So the uh, second topic I think I want to bring up is Oklahoma. I think that's really cool, like, because now we're getting in the part because again we saw like daredevil right and we know that maya they showed that in the in the past that maya was like a, a ass kicking killing machine representing the kingpin right and so so they're saying that daredevil and echo have crossed paths and that before uh, the snap, that th- these events happen basically, and we see Daredevil in this one. His suit looks like the Netflix, but it's not fully the same design of the the Daredevil suit that you saw in the Netflix series. But it's very it's very close. It has the same color of red, so it gives you that feeling like this is the Daredevil suit from the Netflix. But it's a completely different design. It looks like the one he basically wore in She-Hulk, but with that type of red, basically. So that's the only difference. And and I'm not complaining about that. It's a really cool Daredevil suit. I think it's a little bit more common, but accurate to the comic books. But that's just me. And what I like about this is now uh, what I was bringing to Oklahoma is that since now we got Daredevil and other characters like Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and the Punisher who attend to show up in New York, and I got to include Spider-Man. And so now their challenge is, like, if they do all this stuff in New York, people are going to be wondering, like, how can they do all these events and Spider-Man doesn't show up if he's part of the MCU? And, of course, they're playing they're doing a deal and working together with sony uh pictures so this is why it's very easy just to send them off to another state where you know spider-man is not there so oklahoma makes sense so as far as with daredevil board again well i just have to wait and see just like everybody else but for this show i really like that they decided to take her out of new york but still do some stuff where it makes sense why like Spider-Man may not show up because it, he might have been in school, college, or this is maybe something that he just felt like the, the cops can handle basically. But whatever the bay is, I like that for me personally this season, I really they feel, I feel like they really balanced it off to you know try to make people understand why you may not see Spider-Man in this. But it doesn't mean those two characters wouldn't see each other. So that's really, really like it. And, and Oklahoma just has a, you know, that's my second home, basically. So I really like that, and I just like what they they done in there. And it just felt like Oklahoma watching this. Like, if you're if people who live in Oklahoma know what I'm talking about. But it, it felt like a nitty-gritty Oklahoma in the best way you can match. Now, let's talk about the third topic. Now, it's the kingpin. Wilson, Wilson Fisk is back. Now, I, you know, I, I talked to somebody that I know at work who, who, who says not a fan of the kingpin because it's like he doesn't have, like, superpowers, but this dude, this, the kingpin just does not die. Like he can do stuff, but he can he can destroy anybody, kill anybody. But you shoot him in the eye. How do you survive a gunshot? It blows my mind. But I'm really excited to see Kingpin back in the MCU, and I can't wait to see what they're gonna do with him. And honestly, if he doesn't die in this season, like I honestly hope that they use him more in the MCU. I would love to see him be the main villain in a Spider-Man film. Like, it just needs to happen. And they got the right actor to play 
the kingpin. So I'm I'm just excited about that, and I just can't wait to see more of this. But he's alive. He's alive. He's in the hospital bed. He's waking up. So he got shot in the eye. That that blows my mind. Like, wow. That I mean, this this show already has me all geeked up about this. So if I had to give this one out of ten, I'm definitely giving this a ten. And thank you guys so much for checking out my spoiler review. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment Official channel subscribe like hit that notification button so you can always be updated with all my latest content thank you guys and peace out